Oh, welcome everybody. Thank you so much. If you don't have a Midio profile, uh, we urge you to do it for free. We're constantly updating uh, projects and opportunities for you to pitch your music to. In fact, we have something really cool, an ongoing uh, <clears throat> license opportunity, uh, opportunity for you guys to make money. So um, this is really important. So some of you know me, some of you don't. I'll give you a brief history of time that leads us up to this. So uh, I'm a songwriter and producer. Uh, we won't have to get too deep into it. I've been very fortunate to work with a lot of really successful uh, artists. I've had I've managed to have so, uh, quite a few successful songs and work with lots of brands uh, as doing music for film and TV. So when I started this company uh, about three and a half years ago, we wanted to really build something that we can give to songwriters and creatives uh, because I'll admit it, even self-admittedly, you know, I'm not the most organized person in the world, probably like all of you. I really just love writing the songs and cross my fingers and hope something good comes from it. So, but that wasn't good enough. You know, we, we weren't playing on the same level as, um, you know, as, as other songwriters that were signed to publishing deals or maybe other songwriters that had a little bit of a head start on us in terms of building their networking and, 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 you know, and, and just as a little side tip, that's really the number one thing is like, how do you build your network? How do you have your organize, your music organized? And how are you prepared when the opportunity presents itself, when that bell rings? So that's why we built Midio. Uh, it was a way for all of us to track our collaborations together. It was a creative tool. It's a creative tool that allows us to pitch our music. And uh, most importantly, you know, if I collaborate with, I'm just gonna pick uh, Danielle because she's posted a, um, a, a question on our chat. If I collaborate with Danielle and I add Danielle as a collaborator, that song automatically will now get ingested into her profile. She doesn't have to upload it. Because I have a tag her as a collaborator, that song now shows up in her database. We could co-share this information. Um, if she uh, submits the song to SOCAN or her PRO or wherever your PRO is worldwide, all of this information is correct and accurate in one place. So that was really the important thing is how do we like how do we team up here? How do we how do we not work in silos? How do we not work in bubbles? Although thanks to coronavirus, we're all working in silos and we're all working in bubbles. But this is just a little bit of a way to communicate uh, and, and, and collaborate with each other. Another big thought is, you know, there was no ability besides what we kind of do with LinkedIn and Facebook. How do we how do we connect with other like minded people? This is what we wanted to do. So I'm going to jump in here real quick. I'm going to log into my page um, and uh, show you guys uh, kind of what a, a, a reasonably well laid out um, profile looks like. So really, really simple overview. This page that you're looking at right now uh, allows you to basically do kind of 90% of everything that you need to do on video. You can search for songs. Now, when I search, when I say searching songs, I can search songs a, a number of ways. I can say, well, I want to find anything that's hip hop, female with swagger, right? So I can type hip hop, female swagger, and I will get, oh, these are two songs of mine, hip hop, female swagger. Cool. But what I really want to do is show you how we get that information in there again. So I'm going to give you a very broad overview, and then we're going to get a little bit more granular. Uh, granular. Uh, right here with this page, you can see also here's a bunch of notifications. Now these notifications have anything from so and so's ad, somebody's added you to, as a collaborator. And again, we'll go through those notifications. So actually, once you create your profile, it's really easy. Uh, you just go to uh, uh, you click on this button here. You go to manage notifications, and then you can get tick where you want all of those, where you want, where and how you want to be notified. Again, we'll dig right into that. I'm just going to give you a super broad overview. Here you can see some basic analytics. I have 868 tracks. I have 48 cuts and syncs. Uh, I have an overall track rating. I have my list, my 269 collaborators, 230 active pitches, and my reach number, which is 591. Now, what's important to know about reach numbers, the more network, the bigger you build your network, the more songs you write, the more collaborators. That means the more people have access to eventually using your music. Big part of this component, right? It's like, we've written a song, now what? And so this is, this is we're trying to, reduce the now what's and to, to here we go, we're gonna do this now. Um, then we can get a little bit more granular uh, in some of these menus. Uh, first, we have all tracks. This shows us a list of everywhere. We can do a very similar search. We can pitch songs from here. We can, we, we can get a little bit more granular on, uh, on, on the search ability. And then we can do also things like bulk editing songs. Again, we'll dig into all of that. Um, then we have our, our playlist page. This is really, really important. I'm going to show you how we dig into that. We have catalogs. We have AI. We have 
our pitches page, we have our licensing page, we have the projects, which some of you are familiar with, some of you might not be, we'll show you how that works. We have our network page, uh, and then of course we have uh, a bunch of help how-to uh, tutorials. So again, a broad overview. All right, let's dig in. So there's a couple ways that you can add music to your media profile. Old school, add track, I wanna go select the tracks, uh, and I want to open up, uh, we're going to say, uh, drop dead, right? I'm not going to do it now because I think there's a much cooler way to do it. So I would say open, and then it would ingest the track. What I do want to do, however, I'm going to move this down for one quick second. Uh, what we can also do is we can open up uh, our sessions if we wanted to. I'm going to go to find drop dead. Uh, where is it? Here it is. And I can actually literally just drag and drop a song right into my video profile. Now, this is gonna do a couple of cool things. One is, you can do it with one, two, 10, 100 songs at once. So if you're sitting there going, oh man, I got you know 100 songs that I gotta upload into video, fret not, drag and drop. You can pull it from iTunes, you can pull it from your desktop folder, you can pull it from whatever you want, and that song will, will ingest into video. So if you have 100 songs, drag and drop 100 of them in, Go to bed, come in the morning, and your media profile will be populated. What I wanted to show you here is I can actually close this page. It's actually still uploading in the background. I can go through and do my work and create my playlist and do whatever it is that I need to do, uh, and that song is still ingesting in the background. So don't even worry about that. Even though I closed it, it's still there, and when it's ready to be fully ingested, it's going to pop up. Oh, there you go. It's almost like I've done this before. Perfect. There's Drop Dead. Now, what I want to show you, which is really cool, is there is some metadata that is already embedded in the song. So this is a perfect example to show you how we embed metadata. Now, some of you know what metadata is, some of you might not, some of you might have heard the term but don't really understand how it applies. Um, so we're gonna dig into it. Metadata, it, or metadata, I guess whatever, is quite simply, it is the information that is embedded into the audio file itself. So big examples of metadata is the name of the song how long the song is, uh, maybe like a general um, uh, 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 genre tag of the song. That's metadata. It's really, really important to use this as an opportunity to use Midio to embed metadata in your song so that when you pitch it and when you share it with people and they download the song, all of the information relating to that song is then now actually embedded in the audio file. So it's not even just the name and the title, it's the collaborators. It's the collaborator contact information. It's it's the multiple genre tags. It's the contact information for you. Again, big, big mistake that a lot of people make is they send a song. I receive them all the time. We, re we receive music and it's not properly tagged. You know, back uh, 10 years ago, it used to be the rule was never send somebody a CD that didn't have your name and phone number on it. Now the rule is Never pitch somebody a song that doesn't have metadata embedded. So, having said that, people get confused. Well, I don't know how to do that. I'm going to make it really, really easy for you guys. All of these little circles are are ways that you can add digital information to your music. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just play the song real quick. Okay, so I know this song. So I'm gonna go and, and there's a couple ways that we can do it. You can actually play and do metadata at the same time. I'm not gonna do that because I wanna make sure that you guys can hear me speaking. Um, so uh, I'm gonna start embedding metadata. Really simple, I click that pencil. Boom, here comes this window that opens. Now I'm gonna say, I know that this is, I'm gonna add my own custom tags. This is really important because this is searchable too. So let's say if you say, well, I have something that would be uh, a great song, like in this particular case, I'm going to say, well, this is a really, um, uh, this this song reminds me of Ella Henderson. I don't know, whatever. I'm just going to say, uh, so this is my custom tag. So you can say, you know, like we've written songs that, for example, say, oh, this reminds me of Prince, or this reminds me of Michael Jackson, or this reminds me of, of, you know, Cardi B, whatever. You can actually write who it sounds similar to, that becomes searchable. So again, when you go through your database, you, and what you're going to see a lot uh, as the more you log into Midio is you're going to see in, in, in our project notifications, people say things like, oh, sound similar to, and I'll show you how that works in project notifications. So this is a really important facility within Midio, 
that says, oh, you know, if this sounds similar to, I'm going to, I'm going to name all the people that it sounds similar to, because if I need to find those people, you know, if this sounds like Lizzo, whatever, uh, I know that this song will now bubble up to the top, even in the event that maybe I haven't um, accurately or, or extensively enough entered metadata information. So there's a couple other cool things that we're going to talk about in metadata. One is, I, of course, think every song I've written is a five, so I'm going to mark that as a five. My collaborator might go, oh, it's a two or it's a three. It's important that everybody rate, rates their own songs so that when they start sharing it and people start rating the songs as they get shared, they can, you guys can actually get that feedback saying, oh, I thought it was a five, but I sent it to somebody and they only thought it was a two. Ooh, maybe it's not as good as I thought. And I think feedback's really important because we can all play music to you know, our loved ones and they think we're great. <laughs> but in the real world, we need to make sure that, you know, that, that we're putting our best foot forward. And again, just strategy in terms of how to really promote yourself and put yourself out there. The biggest one is when people are asking for music, send good music. Don't, don't just send something because you feel like you have to. If you don't have something that you think works or at least is like really, really close, you are doing yourself a disservice by sending something anyway. I'm just giving you advice friend to friend. Uh, then you can enter things like BPM. Now, there's a couple of cool things. As we move forward within the next, uh, we're looking at six to nine months, we're actually going to be starting to automatically embed who we think you sound like and things like BPM. So you won't even have to enter those in. So in other words, if if you upload a song and, and we say, oh, this sounds like Ella Henderson or this sounds like Lizzo or this sounds like whoever, we're going to automatically create that custom tag for you so that you can search similar songs within your database. That's really, really cool. Uh, next thing, uh, you can enter BPM. So again, searchable. A lot of times, you know, we just we literally have a project that's on the platform right now that they specifically need to replace a song that's 124 beats per minute for a scene that's already been cut to. Uh, again, just strategically, a lot of times when music supervisors are looking for songs and they say, oh, we need it to sound like this, it's because they're already using that and they can't clear that, so they need alternatives. So in my experience, the best way to to get success from pitching music to film and TV is if someone's asking for something that's 124 beats per minute and you send them something that's 105 beats per minute, they're not really going to consider it. It doesn't matter how creative you're trying to help them be. That's not what they want. They, if they want that, this is what they want to expect to receive. Um, so now I'm going to do these really cool things. I'm going to select these tags. So again, if any of you guys are using uh, um, iTunes, or you're exporting music from your DAW and you add a tag, usually you can only add one tag. We can actually have you searching from through a hunt over 180 tags. So I could say, well, this is female, right? This is pop, this is edgy, uh, this is rock, this is um, funky, uh, this has 808s in it. Uh, I'm actually just gonna do this real time. Um, this is also male, uh, there's a hip hop component, um, it's fun right it's up tempo these are all things by the way that you could be doing um while you're uh while you're actually listening to the song now let's say you go well okay what else is there i can now scroll through and i can find all of these other lists uh, and i think what you're going to find is that as you do this uh, you're going to find a lot of consistent usage for certain tags uh those tags will automatically come to the top like for example you can see here i don't do a lot of thrash metal maybe i should um but you can start adding more top 40, you know, dramatic, uh, film and TV, uh, blah, 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 blah. You get the idea, right? So you can do all of that stuff. Uh, here's all of the tags. And then we're going to start getting into alphabetical order, as you can see. Uh, it is not Christian gangsta. Uh, I don't do a lot of Christian gangsta. Maybe I should. There's a tag there for it. Maybe I should do it. Um, but you can see we could cover a lot of different styles. So sometimes when people say, well, I need to find something that is, this meets that meets that. This is a, a perfect way to, to distill down and exactly find the song within your database that matches. Here's what's cool. I'm going to keep going down just so you can kind of get a quick sense of all of the different genres that are in there. Uh, I mean, breakbeat, horns, uh, explicit, of course. Uh, then I want to continue. So I've actually added my publisher. Now, here's the thing. If you're affiliated to a performance rights organization, you are actually already a publisher. You should also make sure to register a publishing company with your PRO. Uh, it, we have partnerships with SOCAN. We're going to show you how that works. Uh, and again, it's just, just uh, more ways to make sure that you guys get paid. And we're going to talk about this a lot on Friday. 
So I've assigned my publisher. I can assign any additional publishers. Uh, I've assigned my, my performance rights organization. In this case, it's BMI. Now, this is really important. This little box here that says public track, what we're asking you to do is saying, hey, do you want your song to be available if a music supervisor or somebody looking for a specific type of song were to come in and search MIDIO? I personally prefer not to have my tracks available publicly, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't have your tracks available publicly. So if someone wants to find female, pop, rock, Christian gangsta, and, and you have that and you, you've clicked public track, they will be able to find your song. You can then uh, uh, you can then assign it to different catalogs, and we'll talk about that in a moment. And then here, this is also really really important information. I could say, well, I want to add the artist, uh, and this is what we this is what we what we call a copy master info or label copy. This is the, the who produced it. You can add different you can add you can add uh, different musicians. You can add whatever information you want. This is the information that comes pre designated within this window. So if you say, well, uh, you know, uh, vocals uh, by Sarah Berrios, right, um, whatever, uh, I could do that. I didn't write vocals well. There's a lot of pressure to typing in front of people. Does not contain a sample? No, it does not. Uh, has it been registered with a PRO? No, it has not. But again, if it has, yes, right? I'm going to save that. Now what you're going to see is all of that information that I just entered is now embedded metadata. So when I share that song now with somebody, when I share the song Drop Dead, this information will all be embedded. So if I haven't spoken to somebody and they hear a great song that they love, all they have to do is press information, boom, it's there. I'm going to add the splits now. So I'm going to, again, create this button. Now I'm going to look for my collaborator. So I wrote this song with, oh, well, there it is, funny, Romel. I'm going to find him. I'm going to add him. Right. I also wrote it with my friend Sarah Berrios. I'm going to find her. I'm going to add her. Now, it automatically defaults as the person that added the song to maintain 100% of the, of the split. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit those splits. So I click the edit split button. I open it up. I'm going to take 33.33. Romel's going to take 33.33. And we're going to give Sarah 33.34 because we're gentlemen. Um, we saved that split. So now we have not only all of the metadata, right? We have the audio. We also have all of the split information. So this is so, so important. I'm gonna show you a couple of quick things too, which I think are really also important. Uh, I don't think I have these lyrics on me. Um, so you can enter, you can same thing. Click the pencil, enter the lyric, drop dead lyrics, whatever. Uh, but you could copy and paste, you could drag and drop, whatever. Uh, and then you can save those lyrics. Uh, you can also do things like, well, when a song gets used, you can track all of the exploitations of that song. Here's all of the relevant information. It's really, really straightforward, super easy to deal with. But here's what's cool. If I've collaborated with you on a song and I've added an exploitation, that exploitation automatically shows up in your database. In other words, we all co-share one point of information. Now, a lot of times people say, well, what if, what if people aren't being cool and they think that they wrote more of a song or you think that you wrote more of a song, uh, then I would say that that's probably not a great collaboration. But we sort of are trying to impress upon people the importance of the honor system. Uh, look, I'm a professional songwriter. I've been a professional songwriter for 25 years. Um, I can honestly tell you I've maybe in that whole time had five copyright disputes and they always get resolved. So I think it's really important to sort of understand that it's kind of an issue, but it's also kind of not really an issue. Sometimes it's a bit more of an issue within band environments. And again, once that stuff is done and you've determined who the splits are, who, who owns what percentage of the songs, you, uh, you, you, you enter that information, boom, we track that information for you as well. And then we have something in here called tweaks, which is just really simple, like, uh, uh, hey guys, great songs, right? Um, and then we can actually communicate within the page now, my collaborators have just received a notification saying Justin Gray added a tweak to Drop Dead. Um, finally, here's any, uh, anything that we call additional data. What's the information you want to know? Who owns the master recording? Put that in there. Uh, who, um, how you like, how you take your coffee? Put that in there. Whatever. Literally, any any information that you think that you need to associate to this song, you can just same thing. Boom. Enter it there. Uh, I like soy lattes. Whatever. 
Uh, the point is, you just add whatever information that you want into that song, and it tracks all of that uh, as we go. So that's basically how a song works. Um, there's other little things, like because I've just uploaded the song, nobody's viewed it, nobody's played it, and the song has never been listened to in a pitch. So that's going to bring me to the next thing I want to do. I want to go talk about searching, because now that you see how we've entered metadata and added all of the information, for example, if I say, well, I want to find anything that I've written with Sarah Berrios, right? I can say, oh, there you go. I have two songs with Sarah Berrios. We're going to just use these as an example, right? So I'm going to go pitch track. Now you see on the left, it's just added to this window. I'm going to say pitch track. Now you see I have now created a pitch window based on searching for songs that I wrote with Sarah Berrios, right? And again, as I said, you could search for through any combination of words, your collaborator, any number of metadata tags, who it sounds like, specific lyric, any any information that we have collected from you with respect to your song, you can search it that way. That's really, really cool. So now let's say I'm going to say, well, I'm just going to write Berrios co-writes. So now I have two options, right? I can pitch it to somebody, right? Or I can create a playlist. So if I wanted to create a playlist, let's say I'm going to do that. You're going to see on the bottom right, it says playlist added. Keep that in mind. We're going to come back to that in just a few seconds. But let's say I wanted to pitch it to somebody. Well, I'm going to pitch it to, I'll pitch it to myself. Here we go. Um, uh, check out these cool songs, whatever. Uh, and I'm going to share that. Pitch successfully sent. So again, what's really important about that is now Sarah has received notifications that says, Justin Gray has pitched the songs Drop Dead and When the Devil Calls My Name to, in this case, me. And we'll see how that all lines up. I want to go now to playlists because this is really, really important. So if you remember, before we pitched it, we created the Berrios co-writes playlist. That's right there. So what's cool is we track all of our plays. So let's say we'll just we'll just we'll come back to this in a moment. But let's say I wanted to find all my swagger songs. I can write swagger instantly. Every playlist with the word swagger shows up. So I can say, well, I want, I want to find swagger tracks. I'm going to open up swagger tracks. So here's all of the songs that are, quote, unquote, swagger tracks in this playlist. Now, once I have a playlist built, I can do a few cool things. One is I can literally just copy and paste it and, and share it as a URL. So if you wanted to post it on your social media, you can add an image. So you can kind of brand it your way. Uh, and then you can share that URL and people can come in and they can listen to your songs. Not No different than the way that they would listen to SoundCloud. Alternatively, you can we can create something called within share with and shared with and actually invite people to essentially be subscribers to your playlist. Now, what's important about this is that uh, let's say you are starting now to build relationships with music supervisors or uh, or or A and R people, or other managers, or other songwriters for that matter, or other creative people, or producers, whatever, whoever, uh, you can actually add them as sub, quote unquote subscribers to your playlist, and this will allow them to access that playlist every single time that you update it. So let's say you've written swagger tracks, and now I'm going to just go in. I'm going to add. Um, let's say I'm going to add uh, this song, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm going to update my playlist. I'm going to add that song. So I've just added this song, One Man. But now I want to make sure that that's the first song they hear. I'm going to drag it and drop it to the top of my playlist. And any time that I've done that, whoever is a subscriber to that playlist will now get notified. Justin Gray updated his Swagger Tracks playlist. Now, here's why that's so important. That's important because when someone receives that notification from us and they go, oh, I'm going to go listen to it because I've, I've made fans or you've made fans. They can go, ooh, I really, really love that song. You know what? I'm going to go license that track. Now, I can't license my own song for obvious reasons but uh, because I own it. But if you were, let's say, to have a relationship with a music supervisor and they go, oh, uh, I love the song. I want to license that song. They can actually do it. We can facilitate that transaction on Midio. We can make sure that you get paid. We can protect and ensure that transaction so that they don't rip you off and that once you get paid, we facilitate that they get the assets that they need. Again, this is what's so important about playlists, but again, jumping back and forth between songs. So for example, I'm gonna click, oh, I'm the original, I forgot about that song, right? I'm gonna open up that song. Here's all of the rele relevant information. In fact, you can see here that we actually have lyrics attached to this song, but 
But I want to show you something really cool. Like, let's say the word um, gliding. We'll just just uh, zoom. There we go. Zoom is timely now because we're in the middle of remote work. So we'll see zoom. Let's come back to that in a moment. So this song now I've clicked uh, on the original. I can see all the different playlists that this music is uh, is affiliated to, and I can jump between those playlists. So if I wanted to jump to uh, you know the the back to the playlist, and I can open up. Uh, the, you know, songs for Ryan playlist, right? So if I wanted to say, oops, um, Ryan playlist, I can go there, music for Ryan, boom, here comes all of the songs that I've sent that are for Ryan. So then I go, oh, I forgot about Snow on the Mountain, right? You get the point. You can jump back and forth. And now this is interesting because this is actually more relevant to some of our conversation. We get a lot of, inf we get a lot of um, communications back from you guys. A big one of them is, you know, how do I know uh, if, I don't know if there's any feedback. I don't know, how do I know if my songs are being heard? Um, this really simple. We track track views. We track how many times it's been played. We track how many times the pitch has been listened to. And we track actually how many times it's been pitched, which is really cool. Um, so, uh, again, we can uh, jump back and forth. Uh, and, uh, you know, here, again, here's all of the information. But what I wanted to do is we talked about the word Zoom. Um, I want to go back and search the word Zoom. Let's see how many songs have the word Zoom in it. Uh, well, actually, there's a couple of them. Is that funny? So, Reed is actually not me. You might be going, well, why is Reed's name showing up? Reed's name showing up is because he has submitted it. He has submitted his music to a project that I may have been uh, a part of. Um, and again, I'll show you all of that. We'll dig into all of that stuff. So, that's kind of like the basics. I'll jump into catalogs really quick. Some of you may need this. Some of you may not. If you are a music publisher, or maybe you uh, have been published and now you're not, or maybe you want to be published, but certain songs, uh, certain rights are only parts of certain relationships, you can actually subcategorize those rights. So for example, for me, uh, I look at the retirement fund and I can see a couple of things. This is my partnership with Razor and Tie. Uh, this is my PRO is SoCan. But if I go to 72 songs, which is my current one, I can see uh, this is BMG is my publishing company. BMI is my PRO, right? So there's there's lots of different ways that you can facilitate how you access and uh, and, and 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 organize your copyrights. Now, what I wanted to show you, which is cool, is let's say I go, I'm going to take Drop Dead for example. I'm going to move that. I can choose a catalog. I can move it to unassigned, whatever, and I can save that. That song now disappears, and it now shows up in my unassigned catalog, Drop Dead, right? So that's what's pretty cool. So in fact, uh, I, I'm actually not, I'm gonna push it back to my 72 songs catalog because I wanna make sure I'm organized. Um, the next thing that we're digging into is PROs. So when you click that button, there's a couple of things you can do. You can go to SoCan and you can actually register your song. You can register as a writer. So if you're not affiliated to a PRO, you can do it that way, or you can even register your song. Really, really simple. Uh, I can submit a works registration. I can select my file, I can save. SOCAN will automatically receive that and we will now embed that 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 information has now been sent to SOCAN. It's been registered with SOCAN. That makes your life millions of times easier, I promise you. Um, so when you get a song done, you want to submit it, you want to register it to SOCAN right away, boom, registered with SOCAN, problem solved, done. We're going to dig into other things like uh, our mood comparison where we can assign a playlist and we can uh, we can set that up so we can do things like uh, analyzing the consistency of the songs from one song to another between them and I can identify uh, specifically this song let's say for example and I can jump back and forth so again it's really a good way to see the consistency within songs within a playlist um, actually what's interesting here is you can see there's a reference to Coldplay uh, which is cool so um, or may not be cool I don't know I don't know if you like Coldplay or not um, I'll go to pitches here real quick. So pitches, uh, as you saw, I was able to send music uh, into a project. Uh, in this case, I pitched myself. Uh, and I can actually see that I have yet to play the song and I have yet to open that song. So what's important is, you know, sometimes I know that you guys feel like, and, and rightly so, that you want some feedback. Uh, has my song been listened to? Has it been heard? This is a good way to sort of determine if that song has, in fact, been listened to or heard, and of course you can do a couple things. One is I can view the pitch details, so I can click on that button. I can then go download specifically that, that pitch, or individually I can download the songs, whatever uh, you wanna do. 
And um, again, I'm able to determine if they have actually seen or listened to my music yet. Um, sometimes, for example, I can see that uh, I pitched uh, rock ideas to my friend Arnold. He's listened, he's opened it and he's listened to it. Again, like you guys, I want that feedback. I want to know if people are hearing it, if people are digging it, if people are liking it. I've I've learned now in my life that I've made an assumption that if uh, I've not been heard back from, it's probably because I didn't like it. It's not personal. It's just they have a lot of music to go through. They have a lot of things to listen to, and you know they can't they can't send uh, feedback or response every single time they receive every song. That would be it would be insane for them. I can do a couple other really quick things. I can create a playlist really quick. I can show the tracks that are in that are submitted in there, and of course, I can delete that pitch. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's great. And I can search within the pitch, you know, anywhere where I've pitched. Uh, well, I, well, I've never right. My bad. You can't search the names of the pitches. You can only search who you've pitched songs to. Um, so again, really cool. Uh, I want to go into. I'm going to skip licenses because that's actually just where you've licensed songs within video. It's a way for you to track all of your activity and all of the money that you've earned. Uh, again, I want to I want to um, just reiterate how important it is that when you're pitching music within video that you stay on the platform because this way we can actually help ensure that whole transaction both from both sides. We want to make sure that we're getting that money for you and we want to make sure that our client who's found your song and identified that song and licensed it is actually getting the rights to the assets that they need. So we're going to actually help you real to real human contact. Uh, make sure that you get that license done. And again, I just want to talk about licenses for a quick second, although we're running through video as a concept. Um, when you're licensing your song to use in a TV show or in a film, or with a record label or with an artist, you, you are not relinquishing your ownership of those songs. You're only saying, hey, for these predetermined um, uh, uh, set of, of, um, of, of licensing information, I'm going to allow you to use my song. So for example, you can use my song for this TV show for this length of time, and and you don't own any of those rights. I own those rights, but I'm allowing you to broadcast it. That's what's called a sync right, which is uh, that's what's called a sync license, which is synchronizing your music to picture. That's why it's called synchronization. Again, just so that you guys know, uh, if you are if you don't have a record deal and you're unaffiliated to a publisher then you actually get what's called an all-in fee or both sides, meaning if somebody says, well, we have a thousand aside, some of you may have heard this information already, some of you may not. Uh, when a song is, gets used in a, in, a, in a license, they have to pay the sync, sync side, which is the songwriters, and then they have to pay the master side, which is the people that own the recordings. Some, and oftentimes they're the same person. If you're an indie band and you're the only writer, you own the sync and publishing and you own the master. Uh, sometimes for me, I do a lot of collaboration. I do a lot of collaboration. So I may own a third of the publishing or the sync, but I may own 100% of the master. So if there was, let's say, a usage that was a dollar a side, I would get 33 cents on the publishing side, or my publisher would, and I would keep a dollar uh, as the person who owns the master recording. So we can facilitate all of those transactions. It keeps you safe, it's trustworthy, it's all protected, and it makes a lot of sense. I want to jump over to projects because this is a real big part of what it is that we're trying to do. We want to create, I mean, all of that organization, it's amazing. Trust me, I promise you, the, the tools that I just showed you are tools that major music publishers have spent millions of dollars developing. We're giving this to you basically for free if you want it. If you want it for free, it's yours for free. So act like a professional, elevate your game, amplify your 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 the way that you approach what you do. I, Guarantee you, you're going to see those results. Uh, so I want to jump into a few things here. One is a uh, projects page. These are projects that are currently active and available on the platform. Uh, so for example, there is this one, cover your assets. I'm going to click on cover your assets. This is, uh, uh, so I've not submitted any tracks, but I want to show you something on the other side of this transaction. So I've not submitted any tracks to this yet and I've not at invited any members. Now, what's important as we get into network, I'm gonna show you how this works. You wanna add people to your network, you wanna add people to your team, and I'll show you how that works. Let's just keep moving from left to right real quick. So um, these, this project has tags. I wanna now pitch to this project. I'm gonna go pitch that project. Pretty much anytime you see a purple button, uh, that means that there's an actionable opportunity there. I'm gonna click pitch the project. I'm gonna say, well, I wanna find, same thing, right? I wanna find, uh, my hip hop songs 
Do I have any hip hop songs about Gucci? I'm gonna write hip hop Gucci. Uh, oh, there it is. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna now pitch that. I'm gonna say, uh, and I'm gonna write a message. Um, check out my song, whatever. Uh, and I'm gonna say, okay, I've now submitted this song to this project. Simple as that. Um, again, I want to remind you guys that if they're asking for a very specific type of song, if they're asking for Christian gangsta metal and you send them hip hop funk reggae, that's bad on you. Uh, they're going to they're gonna immediately go, oh, Justin sends me the wackest stuff. I'm not going to listen to it. So you really want to make sure that you get close to what they want. And this is just advice. We, we, we had originally intended on creating a, a lot of kind of like firewalls that disabled somebody from pitching the wrong song. And we had a lot of discussion internally about it. We're like, you know what? We're just trying to create the most diplomatic platform possible. And if somebody makes the decision to send the wrong song, that's kind of on you. So I'm just going to tell you from friend to friend, try and be as accurate as possible when people are looking for songs that they're searching for on the project. On the, on, you get one opportunity, even if they don't like the song, even if your song doesn't get chosen, that's okay. If they're hearing you going, oh man, Justin's got great stuff, they'll know for next time that when you send them something, they're going to listen. If you send them whack music, they're not going to listen. I, I promise you. Uh, anyway, uh, let's keep moving forward. So that's how you pitch to a project. But also, here's what's really cool. I'm actually going to create a project live right in front of you. Let's say, well, I'll just do it like this. I'm going to go create a project. All right, I'm going to say uh, producer um, looking for artists. Um, let's capitalize artists. Why not? And I also really like exclamation points. They're my favorite. Um, I, I, I can send out, I'm, I don't have to fill out any of this information. I can say whatever, uh, production name, um, da, 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 da. Uh, I can create a project value. I can create the term. Is I'm going to say, well, I, duh, to be determined. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, hey, all, um, exclamation point, of course. I am a producer currently looking for cool unsigned artists. All genres. Welcome. Welcomed. Welcome. Welcomed. Let's say. And it's not certainly, it's currently. Again, please don't judge me based on my typing abilities. Um, I can enter all kinds of other relevant information. I can now enter uh, genre tag. So I want to say whatever. It doesn't matter. Now I want to add um, my tags. Same thing. I'm going to say uh, pop, top 40, rock, hip hop, um, hip hop, uh, male, female, whatever. However, however, family, let's say female. However, whatever I wanted to add, right? Instrumental, fun, quirky. 808s, whatever, whatever it is that I want to do. I'm basically, I'm basically categorizing the type of artist that I want to, that I want to hear. I can add a pitch deadline. So I say, well, I want to only hear back from people by April 17th. We're going to add that. I can add watchers. So I can say, well, I want to have, um, you know, my manager or somebody that is within my, uh, my network again, which we're going to jump into, be, uh, be aware of when people submit songs. And I'm going to say save so i'm actually i've actually just now posted this what's cool is this project that i just posted we have now emailed out to over 5,000 creatives some of you will probably get this email 5,000 creatives music supervisors i've just literally created a project live on video and um it'll be interesting to see who submits songs but what i wanted to show you is we can then also identify between all projects and my project. So you can see here specifically, these are projects that I've posted. I'll show you a couple of things. For example, I want to define C-pop big ballads. So um, these are all of the pitches that I received. These are all of the tracks that people sent to me to consider. That's pretty cool. So, um, you know, and, and here's of course, uh, I've not invited any members to this project. So that's again, a very, very cool way to connect with other people and, uh, and to find collaborators and of course, using video as the way that you um, support and and control all of those assets. And of course you pitch them. And again, it's really, really, we're really excited about it. I'm gonna go to network here real quick. And then um, we're gonna jump into questions because I don't know if you guys have them. I'm not paying attention. I'm just paying attention to this right now. So we have three different, basically kind of four different relationships within the platform. We have what we call my team. We have uh, 
different publishers that have an interest in my music. We have our network, so it's kind of like imagine LinkedIn. Uh, and then of course we have at, the, at uh, last, but certainly not least, all of my collaborators. Um, so, and again, actually I wanna go back to collaborators on something else too. Uh, in a moment, um, so I can I can add people to my network, and we're also going to be adding a, a search within your network. So let's say uh, I wanted to find um, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll let's type in somebody that uh, uh, let's say uh, 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 who else? Let's let's find a name here that a, a name here from anybody that's been asking questions. Um, can somebody hand me a give me, give me a name of anybody that's been asked that's asked a question? Eric Jones. E-R-I-C Jones, right? So I'm gonna go search for Eric Jones. Um, I see, oh, there he is. I'm gonna add, add to network. I'm gonna confirm that. Now what's cool is Eric will just now received a notification that says, uh, hey, uh, Justin Gray wishes to add you to his network. But here's what I wanna show you, which is really cool. When I go and uh, go to Eric Jones, again, we're working on this search. It's gonna, it's gonna get a lot bit better. When I go to Eric Jones, I can view his, I can view his profile. Uh, I can see um, that he hasn't added any songs yet. That's cool. Uh, but uh, we are we are now connected. And once we're connected, once he accepts my network request, I can actually then go and I can promote him to to a different level of relationships. So, for example, take um, we'll take uh, here Strider White, right? So I can add Strider to my team. Click. I can add him to my team. I can give him now three different levels of access. One is I can say, well, I just want Strider to listen to my music, um, or I want Strider to listen and pitch my music, or I want Strider to actually be an admin for my song, meaning he can kind of act like me, he can uh, he can uh, pitch my music for me, he can add changes to splits, he can upload lyrics, he can add, add, add metadata on the music. He, the only thing he can do is upload a song. So we can actually provide different levels of relationships. So if you're starting to create relationships with music supervisors, um, let's say, uh, and you want them to be able to have listen and pitch, you add them, you create, you just click listen and pitch, you confirm, and now every time that music supervisor logs in and you've now uploaded a new song, they've actually get they actually get access to your song that you've pitched. So they can, again, they can go through your database, they can find your music, they say, I, want, I only wanna find the stuff that Strider's written. They can search Strider, they can they can create playlists, or they can say, is there anything that Strider's done, and Justin's done, and Naoki's done, and Athena's done. So and again, you if you give them access to your, music, to your music in that way, you can actually find, you know, our goal is to have you wake up and get a notification going, guess what, your music has been licensed, right? So we're really excited about that. Uh, I see there's been a, no a new notification. I'm actually going to open it up here. Let's see what that notification says. Um, so Danielle Jure has updated uh, tracks in music playlist. I don't know that she's on the call. So we see you. We got you. Um, uh, and uh, and we can look at a few of them, right? Like I can see other people that have added songs to this playlist. So it's re we're really, really excited about it. Um, and I can see the tracks specifically. So again, we're trying to connect everybody in one place uh, and uh, and do it that way. Um, in fact, I know that there's a couple of people on this call right now, and I can see for a fact that um, where was it? I saw it. Uh, let's see, it was Kiki, I think, and I think she's on the call. Uh, yes, you've yet to receive, you've yet to accept my network request. Um, same with you, Danielle. Same with you, Danielle. Same with you, Eric. You know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm only half teasing. Um, so, so this is kind of like the overview of everything. Now, what I wanted to do is show you something cool. So let's say um, I wanted to uh, create a, uh, I'm gonna add Zan to this song, right? So I'm gonna add Zan to this song and I'm gonna go search, um, do we have Zan? Is she on, is she on here? We do have Zan, but we have, we have two old emails. So I'm gonna actually do, uh, I'm going to invite her on a different email. I'm going to invite Zan Polka, and I'm going to do Zan at weareantigravity.com. So I can actually invite her, send her that information. She is now going to pop up as a collaborator on the song. Uh, and then I can now add her as a collaborator with her percentage. So I can edit those splits. Um, sorry, wrong button. I can, I can add those splits. 
uh, I can search her and um, oh, we just have to do a, we just have to do a refresh. There it is. Uh, and I'm going to add her as a, as a collaborator. So I'm going to save those splits because she gets 0%. But I've now just added her and that song is automatically including all of this information in, in her database. So if I were to click on Zanpoka, I can see this song that we've written is already in her database. Um, it's really, really cool uh, the way that everybody sort of interconnects. Um, so that's kind of like the overall everything. Um, if there is any questions, uh, please. I mean, I don't know if we, I haven't been tracking it, but I mean, Xander, do we have any questions? Hey, yeah, we do have a couple questions. We'll start with Craig. Um, one of my co-writers co has an ASCAP number, but it's part of Minio. We registered for Song Trust, and I was able to add his number without him registering. So two questions. Do I need Song Trust or solutions like that? And then does he have to register to add him to the split? Which I think you just kind of answered. But. Great. Okay, so great questions. Um, so he, he doesn't need to be a member of Minio in order to for you to give him a split of the song. What's cool is, even if 100 collaborations from now, he decides, you know what, everybody's talking about this video thing, I'm going to log in. All of those all of those songs that he's been attributed collaboration on will all be in his database. He doesn't have to do any of that work. So the whole idea was instead of three people doing 100% of the admin on each, in other words, 300% work, uh, it was how do we reduce that share of the workload? Because like all songwriters, I'd rather be creative. I hate admin. Zan will attest to that. I hate it. So how do we create uh, something that makes everybody co-share this information. Now, with respect to Song Trust, Song Trust is basically a music publisher that can set you up to collect and administer revenues from uh, from things like live performances, uh, streaming, radio performances, uh, any TV performances, basically anywhere where there's a, a public performance of a song, um, they are set up to collect for, on your admin share. Usually, it ranges between 10 and 20 percent um, of, of your revenue. So right now we are not an alternative to uh, Song Trust. We do, however, at some point see an opportunity to partner with a company like that to provide those admin services. But right now, no, um, we, we, wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't replace Song Trust. We would work collaborative, collaboratively with them. Also, I don't know if you guys noticed, but Strider just accepted my invitation to be on, to, to be on my team. That literally just popped up in my notifications as we were talking. Cool, Strider. Hey. Um, any other questions? I hope that answers the question. I think it does. Um, what else we got, Dan? Yeah, this one's from Allie. Um, hers is about the layout of my video page doesn't quite look like Justin's. I don't have latest news or the overview of pitch, catalog, or cut numbers at the top of my page. Um, that's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but let's try out something. Um, uh, maybe just while Allie is here, um, is there uh, is there a, a, a name that I, I'm, I'm going to search Ali? I, I can't imagine. I'm sure we have a few of them, and I'm and I'm only assuming that it's Ali A L I. Um, uh, if it's Ali Slate, I'm going to add her to my network. Um, but otherwise, I don't know what other Ali uh, we could be referring to. Um, Ali Slate. Oh, it is Ali Slate. Okay, so the reason why you don't have that Ali that actually helps a lot is because Ali is a publisher. Um, and so she, she wouldn't have that number available to her on the top. This is a, my songwriting page. Um, so if, if uh, we can go through this more specifically, uh, and because each publisher, uh, each publisher page is different in, in respect for Ali, who's a dear friend of mine, um, I don't want to open her page in front of everybody. So Ali, please feel free to hit me and we could do this and go all, over all of this sort of stuff um, with you. But uh, but you do bring up a good point. Um, I don't see why there would be a reason why we can't add some of those um, quick hit analytics to your uh, to, to to your page. I think that that would probably be a great idea. Um, and as far as notifications, uh, it's the same thing. Uh, those those aren't available in um, in your publisher page on this page, but you do have a notifications button up here. Um, so uh, you would click that, and you can say see notifications or see messages. Uh, we we had to prioritize landscape um, in, in what we felt the publisher really wanted to see. For example, what you don't see here is my collaborators and my roster. So that's that's the reason. But um, certainly we can talk about that. That's easy stuff to do. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Uh, from Craig, can you load videos or links to videos? 
Uh, you cannot load video. Uh, look, Ali Slate accepted my network request on behalf of Slate Music Publisher. Cool. We're friends. It's official after 15 years, Ali. We're friends. Um, so uh, the answer is you cannot upload video. Uh, however, as I suggested earlier, uh, if you wanted to have a specific video link, you could add that into additional data. You could you could just copy and paste a video link into your additional data, and then uh, and then you can you know use that as a reference point if you wanted to. Yeah, I mean we're not a video search engine, not quite yet. Um, this one's um, from Ali. Yes. Uh, do track views okay. take into account your own views? I noticed track views going up every time I went back to the track, so I wasn't sure if my own views were being counted towards it. Um, I lost the first half, but I think that you're wondering, I think the question you were kind of asking me, like, does, do your views count as track views? Yes. You're, yeah, okay. it's, it's aggregated all views of those songs. So if you're going back to a song and playing it, um, that, that counts, it's not external track views. No. Um, in other words, uh, if, if you're logging in and playing it, that counts as a stream. Uh, this one's from Eric. Um, he's having some technical issues. Um, he has issues under user details and getting things to save administrator rights management. Uh, it says that he can't save because he has certain areas blank because um, he doesn't know what they are. Like he doesn't have a website anymore because he wasn't getting enough traffic traffic to keep it up. What he's saying is that if if he doesn't have a um, if he doesn't have information for a required field, he can't he can't save. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Really? Um, that's a good question. You know what? Uh, what I think we're going to do is we're going to we're going to reduce a bunch of the required fields. I think you're making a really good point, Eric. So give us um, give us a little bit, and we'll see if we can do that. I wonder if he's having problems uploading songs. He shouldn't. Um, but uh, but if he does, um, then uh, then have him hit uh, J Gray at Medio G J G R A Y at mdiio.com and we'll see if we can't get uh, his um, his issues looked at. Not a problem. Um, I wanted to actually go through this because we didn't we didn't really talk about this very quickly, but uh, the manage notifications button button under your settings, uh, you can act. We have a lot of stuff. We're constantly updating this, um, and you want to make sure that not everything is ticked because otherwise you will get emails a lot. Uh, but Basically, every act like I, you, I can be, I could choose what I wanted to be notified on any activity. So I want to be notified if I get a new message. I want to be notified if someone pitched a song for me. Uh, I want to be notified if someone has requested me to be in their network or if they've accepted my request. Uh, same thing. I don't. We don't need to go through every one of them. You get the point. Um, so you can actually customize your notification settings as well uh, in here. Uh, and if you wanted to, you can actually click this button up here that says, I just, you know, I don't want to get all of these all the time. I just want to get one summary email with any activity that's happened during the day. Um, you could do that too. Really easy. Um, uh, any other questions? By the way, that goes for anybody. Anybody in this call, if if you feel like you, you want a little more clarification because you started messing around after you watch this, just hit me at J Gray, G-R-A-Y, the letter J, G-R-A-Y, at M-D-I-I-O.com. Um. Is there a preferred or required file type for submissions? For example, are MP3s preferred for metadata purposes or what WAV files for lossless quality? No, uh, we only support MP3. Uh, and the reason is because WAVs are a lot bigger and also actually MP3s uh, are standard for embedding metadata um, in, at this level. So uh, the goal is that as you pitch songs and people like songs, uh, we want to we want to try and recreate a real world real world experience. So as you submit songs and people collect songs and they go, oh, we love you know who is it? who asked that question? Just real quick. That was from Jordan. Okay, so Jordan. So someone goes, oh my God, I love this Jordan song. The whole point is we then we then make that connection. You then get them all of the high res lossless files that they need, uh, and we facilitate that transaction for you. But no, the idea is that we store and house metadata within MP3s uh, on um, on video. Um, this one's from Johnny. Uh, if I have two artist project names that I release under, it appears I can simply use the same profile and list the artist name as it is. Um, and if he's planning to represent some artists for pitches, can he just do that from the same page? Um, I guess I'm asking, or I guess I'm acting as a publisher then. So as long as I have an agreement with them, it should also work that way or any advice appreciated. That's a good question. Um, so we do have a separate publisher. And uh, again, if you guys are publishers and you want to go through this sort of again on the publisher level, 
just same thing. Hit me with hit me on that email and we'll set that up. Um, that's easy. That's no problem. We're sort of aiming more at the songwriters right now. But to answer your question, yeah, there's a couple things that you could do. One is if you wanted to sort of use it based on how you're set up right now, you can uh, basically get them to let's say add you as a collaborator and assign you zero percent or whatever your percentage is. Uh, that you have as their quote unquote publisher or as the deal that you have with them and then those songs will automatically show up in your database that's that's uh, assuming that you're using this this type of profile this uh, not not our publisher profile uh, but if you're using our publisher profile we would set you up and create a roster for you that whenever anybody uploads a song that song automatically will ingest into your database uh, as a publisher so you can really kind of do it both ways um it's uh it's sort of however you want it to but johnny feel free to email me and, and we can have a more conceptual conversation of how uh of how maybe in your case it might work best for you like if you have you know one or two clients um then you know we could we could probably do it this way but if you have obviously as a free user we have limitations as a subscriber you know th there are no limitations so that that's that also comes into play too so we can have that discussion and figure out what's the best way to to, to, to handle your, your unique um, situation. Two questions on um, Midio's cut. Do you guys take a cut of the licenses done? What's your guys' percentage? Uh, that's a great question. So um, right now, literally today, uh, we are taking zero commissions uh, on, on anything that we place until this insane situation comes to an end. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is once it does come to an end, uh, we really wanted to make sure that any part of our share that we would take for facilitating a transaction within Midio and on the platform was lower than what it would be traditionally. So uh, if you were, um, let's say, had a non-exclusive arrangement with somebody, uh, you would be paying them, you know, we're seeing people taking up to 40%, even 50%. Uh, we're, we would be taking 20% as a, as a premium subscriber. Um, and that's only for a transaction. That's only for for opportunities transacted specifically on Midio. So if you were sitting at a cafe and you went through your music and pitched it to a music supervisor, and you just use Midio to support your pitch, no, of course we we take nothing from that. That we take zero, uh, and we never would. Uh, but if we if we found an opportunity and you pitched to that opportunity and you got that opportunity and placement directly from this relationship, then yeah, then our share uh, for uh, on a, on a paid subscriber which is 15 bucks a month would be um 20 percent if you're using totally for free uh then that the net percentage goes up but uh, we give you the opportunity to to upgrade your account um when you do that transaction so you can actually save money there too but again i i know that that percentage sometimes sounds a little bit um surprising to some people uh that by the way that doesn't that doesn't go for you know if we have you as a publisher client that's obviously different um, that's just for a single user. But uh, when you really go do your research and you start looking at people that are song pluggers um, in in uh, in the sort of like the real world as opposed to the what, the digital world, um, you know those percentages are you're lucky if they're starting below 35 percent, and that's assuming that you are very very established. Uh, typically, they're taking 50 to 75 percent. Believe it or not, and I do mean that seriously. And uh, do your research. I don't want to call out certain companies, but if you if you don't have to dig that hard enough to probably Google non-exclusive song representation or something, and I'm sure you'll find people taking 40, 50, up to 75%. And I mean that ser seriously, it's it's crazy out there. So we want it to be as friendly as possible. And it, look, if it was up to us, we would do this for free. Obviously we can't because we need to pay to host all this stuff and our staff of people to help support our, our, you know, our members. So I hope that answers the question. Um, we have a couple questions about instrumentals. Um, do you recommend adding instrumentals? Um, is that something that's often used or needed? What percentage of that is wanted? Great, great question. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. In fact, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do uh, "Love Enough" because this is a perfect example here. Um, this is a song that we have uh, called "Is Love Enough to Save the World." Um, and yes, so the answer is in every page. You can actually upload multiples, uh, so you can actually track all of the different iterations within Midia. So you can, let's say, have, and, I, and by the way, instrumentals, yes, every single time that I uh, uh, finish a song, especially if I know that it's going to be kind of specifically focused on uh, film and TV, I will drop an instrumental, what's called a, a sorry, a full version, 
uh, a TV version, which is usually an instrumental minus, uh, which is usually a full version minus the leads. So backgrounds so and maybe like woohoos or something that's non-lyrical. I'll do a full instrumental, which is no vocals at all. Uh, and then sometimes we'll add, even add things like um, a link back to stems. So for example, I know that, uh, I think it was Craig that asked this question. If you wanna do additional data, you can literally click back to a Dropbox link that houses your stems if you wanted to do that too. Um, in, in full res, uh, full res WAV files or AI files or whatever. So yes, the answer is always have instrumentals available uh, because sometimes, in fact, we just had one here. I'll just, uh, this was a project that just recently uh, expired, a replacement for Fits in the Tantrums hand clap. Uh, looking to replace hand clap by Fits in the Tantrums in a current auto campaign with different song that can carry the rhythm and fill space. Looking for instrumentals and lyrical songs, but lyrical songs have to be relevant somehow. So they're wide open to instrumentals and if I can, yeah, so the, term was a six-week term for twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars. Again, that's a license. They're not buying the song from you. They're only licensing the song. They're renting the rights to use the song for this specific purpose. Um, so I think that answers the question. Um, yeah, what's up? Is there anything else? Um, cool. How large is the pool of supervisors or publishers who have video accounts and actively host projects soliciting material? How does it compare to a platform like Taxi? So this is a great, that's a great question. So we are new, we're currently building our relationships. Currently we have a, uh, we, we, there's a bunch of initiatives that we have yet to launch that we're starting to launch. Uh, one is we are gonna be doing weekly playlists that we are going to be encouraging our users to, and I'm gonna answer all these questions. I'm not, I'm not politicizing, I just wanna set it up before I put it into context. So we're gonna be launching weekly playlists. Uh, so for example, we might have the, um, fun swagger female uh, R&B playlist. And we're gonna, we're gonna send that out to, right now we have uh, over 1500 music supervisors that are, that, are, that, are on our, that are on our mailing list that, we're, that we constantly engage with. Uh, we're gonna start, it's a weird time right now, I'm not gonna lie, because again, TV shows are being shut down, commercials aren't being shot. There's a lot of weird things that are happening that are actually slowing the searches down right now. Um, the second thing is uh, with respect, but but those are all coming. And um, the next thing was the taxi question. Look, I, I want to say this uh, with with as much respect for anybody that uses it. But taxi is we we don't we're we're not in that same boat. We don't you don't have to pay to submit anything. Um, that none of, we we don't we don't charge for those things. Uh, though that's that's insane. Uh, we just would never would do that. Um, Taxi has a has a business model that we personally don't subscribe to in in thinking that it's fair and right for people that spend their energy um, investing into music and their money investing into music. Uh, it, it that just doesn't feel right to us. So we we almost look at it like this is an opportunity engine. Uh, you can use it for free. You can submit to projects for free. Um, you know, obviously we would participate in a percentage. Uh, uh, you know, and when that comes down the pipe, but it, the, the intention is that you know we don't want to charge uh, any uh, in anything. We, you know, that, that that's not that's not what we do. We just don't do that. Anything else? Yeah, one last question. Um, is there a template for metadata? Can I bulk load metadata, uh, which would be the same for fifty songs? That is a great great question. So um, if you were, let's say, going to, I'm going to go back to all tracks. Um, so if I wanted to do a bulk edit and I wanted to, let me, let me phrase this, let's try this again. Let's say I want to go boom, 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 whatever. I'm just going to pick these, well, actually I'm not going to pick those. I'm going to pick uh, these uh, these four songs, whatever. Uh, I can click bulk edit. I, I can have those songs and I can now enter any information that is co-shared between these four songs. So the answer is yes. You can identify all of your songs. You can select all and say, well, these are all gonna be, I'm just gonna say pop and J-pop and whatever, whatever sort of comes up. Uh, and I can add in bulk any of that. I can I can assign it to a specific publisher, uh, or of course I can assign this all to a specific PRO, or I can do whatever and I can save that. And now I've just did, <laughs> and I've just, I actually did yes, but the answer is yes, you can bulk edit that metadata. Uh, is the answer. So if you're having issues with that, please hit me at jgray at midio.com and uh, we'll get that sorted out for you. Um, any other questions? Uh, from Johnny, can you just show how to add the um, the track versions for the instrumentals? Sure, that's a great, that's perfect. Uh, let me actually do one 
that I know that I've recently dropped an instrumental. Best day ever full. Okay, so take best day ever, really simple. Oh, I've actually done these, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. Um, you click this button. As I said, anywhere where you see kind of like a round blue purplish button or whatever, blue maybe, I don't know. Um, you click that button. It has it opens up this immediately opens up this page. I wanted to go to um, let's say what was it best day ever. Uh, so I'm gonna go to sessions. I'm gonna go to my headmaster project. We'll just do we'll do let's go wild even though it's the same thing. I'll say here's my actually in fact you can, guys can get a sense of this now. Um, here's my different parts. So you can just as creatively you can see I have um, let's go wild clean final clean. Final clean wave, final clean instrumental, final clean instrumental wave, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to add the uh, final MP3, whatever, open. And now, same thing. I'm just pulling it in, and it's going. It's actually going to say, um, let's go wild. But that's how you do it. You just literally add the parts like that, uh, and then uh, you're good to go. Um, any other questions? Uh, no, that's it. Awesome. Um, well, thanks again, everybody. Uh, just a couple of little small orders of business. Uh, one is we have a really cool uh, webinar with Michael McCarty, who is the chief membership officer at SoCan, and Zach Katz, who is the former global president of BMG Music Publishing, who's overseeing the careers of people like Jason Derulo and Cardi B and Juice World and yeah, Blink-182, and he's been a record executive. Uh, we're going to talk about covering your assets and making sure that you are doing everything you need to so you can get paid and make all the money that you can make. And uh, again, anytime you guys have a question, you have my email address, please hit me up. And i um, really looking forward to uh, hearing from you and to uh, getting your music. So write great songs and um, stay safe out there and uh, don't eat bats. I don't know. Uh, thanks again, Midio.com. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Take care. Thank you.